baby. I see the duck. You have a duck on your shirt. Parentes, also known as infant directed talk, this term refers to the unique, exaggerated pattern of speaking adults typically use with young children. A pattern that's found regardless of language. But why do we speak to babies like this? To answer this question, we need to answer a related one. How do we learn language? Babies clearly don't naturally understand everyday speech. So how do they develop this important skill? The first step is dissecting the speech that's naturally coming at them. Humans are capable of producing all sorts of sounds, or phones. But in any given language, we categorize these into just a handful of phonemes, the units of sound that make a word distinct. Now, these phonemes can actually consist of multiple unique sounds. The breathy P in pin is technically a different sound than the P in spin. But in English, we treat them as interchangeable. So the first step a child must take is to learn the phonemes being used, because the sounds in one language may differ vastly from those of another. The thing is, children don't initially show any preference for the sounds of this or that language. To them, the P in pin and the P in spin are two different P's. So how do children learn to discriminate these sounds? It's simple. They listen. For instance, English treats ra and la as two distinct phonemes, while Japanese treats these sounds, and those in between, as the same. So in everyday language, children in English-speaking houses will hear lots of ra sounds and lots of la sounds, without hearing many in between. When they're about six months, children in English-speaking households automatically learn to treat this point as the border separating two phonemes. Children in Japanese households, however, will hear a broader distribution of sounds along the spectrum. So children exposed to lots of Japanese won't draw this line here, and will learn to hear ra, la, and the sounds in between as the same. But processing language doesn't just stop at the level of phonemes. We have to move from recognizing the sounds of a language to recognizing its words too. But that's not exactly an easy task. While written language has spaces to clearly indicate when one word starts and another ends, that's not the case with speech. For instance, this paragraph has 45 words, but only seven or so distinct pauses. Because words tend to run together, pauses usually only indicate emphasis, or breaths. And this makes it difficult to perform speech segmentation, or determining what sounds mark the beginning and ends of words. Again, this might be accomplished by just listening. So as children hear speech, they pick up on which patterns of phonemes tend to follow one another, they may hear that the sounds in monkey tend to come together, as with words like weasel and the. This process applies not just to nursery rhymes about mulberry bushes, but other kinds of speech in general. As children listen to people talking, they know certain sounds often go together, and certain sounds don't. So by the time they're about one year old, they get a sense of the common words in language. And throughout this process is where parentese comes into play. That kind of over-exaggerated speaking with its shorter words, higher pitch, and exaggerated vowel sounds reduces the complexities of everyday language. It tunes out the noise, so to speak, creates clarity and contrast, so that the language children receive is as easily processed as possible. And perhaps the most fascinating part is that these steps, from picking up phonemes to learning words, happens automatically. It's easy to take this all for granted, but the underlying processes at work in the child's brain are, simply put, remarkable. Mm -hmm.